How's it going? Just putting together the last grow bed and I just thought I'd show you how we're setting up our bell siphons and the housings that go around it, the shroud. All right, so what we have first is a washer, just sits down there, just to stop any water escaping. Then we have the end cap that helps lock the shroud in place. Then the bulkhead fitting with the standpipe, just goes in there like that. And underneath we screw on the nut and another washer. And on the end of that we have the siphon tube. And then we have the fitting for the um, waste water back into the sump tank. So what we have now is, just to explain how it works, these holes in the bottom allow water through underneath the bell as the grow bed fills. It comes up the top here and water starts to flow over the top of this pipe. It gets to the stage where a siphon is um, initiated by just the, the amount of water that's flowing over the top of here and it just drags all the water in the grow bed through these holes. So the water level comes down to these holes here. When it falls to this level down the bottom here, there's a little hole. Air enters into that hole and then comes up the top, breaks the siphon, and meanwhile the whole time the grow bed's still continuing to fill, so it comes up to another cycle. So that's pretty much all how it works. So now that is all in situation, we put a shroud over the top here to stop any little clay balls hopping in there, getting in there. And we have a little cap. This is just another 100 mil um, end cap. I found, one of the problems I found with the previous makes we did in the barrel ponics, leaving the whole rim of the end, um, end cap on was very tight fit and people were pulling it and that's what was lifting the shroud out. So what I did was just cut a section out, so it just sits on there loosely now, just enough for no leaf litters or twig or little hands to get in there. Rightio, so the water's just started to go down that stand tube now, so I'll just put on this bell here. And what happens is the water travels down there once the siphon is created, down here. And look at that, straight away the siphon's created, and that's it running into the sump tank. So, I'll actually use this to time how long it takes. Air's just starting to be stuck into the um, bell now. So... That's the start of the siphon breaking. So there you go, roughly two minutes, 10 seconds from the um, end of the filling to that burp there at the end. So, yes, very impressed. So that's how it's going at the moment. Now all I gotta do is clean off the rest of those um, clay balls over there with my tripod and fill her up and plan her out try to hide from the sun here. Another thing I'm just going to show you is the plumbing. We've finished up the plumbing from the fish tank to the grow bed so I'll give you a look at that. What I've done is put a 32 mil bulkhead fitting um, in there. This fitting here is a screw fitting that goes on the end of the bulkhead so what I've done is put a little stainless steel screw in there. Um, the reason I've done that is if I ever need to pull this off I can do it nice and easily. That's a screw fitting. If it was glued, I'd be pretty much full stuffed. I'd have to cut this off here and try and undo it that way. I've made it so all the pipe work can come off in two pieces. So just in case we need to change it. 32 mil fitting. Everything's glue. Ah, sorry. Everything's glued bar that fitting there into that tank, and the fitting at the end of this one. So I'll just show you 32 mil pipe all the way down. I've got an emergency, or oh, just a cut-off valve, shut-off valve, it goes there. I have a one-inch um, pipe adapter fitting coming out of the um, main feed line here, and that will actually go down into the sump tank, either to put on, um, if we end up with too much pressure, uh, a um, overflow down into there, or I might use it to plumb in another bed somewhere else, I'm not too sure yet. It's, I just thought I'd put it in there, had the fitting, why not? Down here, I have some gate valves. I got them in a bucket um, it's from an irrigation guy who was sewing a whole heap of used fittings. I got three of them, so I figured, well, I might as well use them in here. All here's glue. This fitting here is not glued, so I can take out that stainless steel um, screw. 
it's a little bit damp so it's got a bit of moisture coming through take out that screw and I can pull this section that runs along here out so that's there this gate valve is connected I just haven't got it on yet there we go it's running nicely so this one here is not running at the moment oh it's running very slowly um, goes across here the back of number one grow bed over to this corner and then the first tap is here I've taken off the top of the taps just to stop the kids mucking around with them and disturbing the flow and I have another one here so this will be going into this grow bed here that I was just showing you and I'm just going to give this a bit of a move around that's the colour of the water coming out so all those suspended particles can do damage to the fish so that's pretty much for a while I give it another two rinses just to make sure it comes out a lot cleaner so I'll get another rinse after this and then um, I'll bring it online and see how we go so here we have the outlet pipe that goes from the fish tank um, into the 32mm feeder pipe for the grow beds what I've got on the bottom is just a cap just to stop any fish getting in there and just some slits I've just cut in there so it's a two minute make and at the top I'm just using off an, um, an end bit well, that's no problem just put a bit of a uh, bit of short um, waste pipe in there onto the um, T-piece and now this goes straight into the fish tank I have the assistant holding the camera now um, what this pipe does it goes and attaches onto the outlet it has a hole in the top to prevent a, a siphon occurring and siphoning out the fish tank. Uh, with these other ones here you can see I've actually added a little end cap with holes drilled. I don't know if I'll do that with this one, we'll just see what happens. So the purpose of the holes in the bottom is to grab all the waste from the bottom of the tank. Um, all those little bits of solids you can see floating around that I've disturbed. They get picked up and taken through this pipe and into the grow beds. Now in the grow beds um, tomorrow probably I will add a handful of a good handful of um, composting worms um, we've got composting worms in the other grow bed and they love it and come across them all the time we pulled a green onion the other night and we found a um, hitchhiker so he went out into a little pot plant out the back rightio so there we go it's all up and running that is plumbed down in there starting at the start of the system where this is the sump tank. This is where all the water from the grow beds drain into. Um, these are the pipes from the grow beds. Down the bottom there we have a 2,400 litre an hour pump that is feeding directly to the fish tank. All these little pipes that I had running in from the fish tank or um, that one over there from the pump to alleviate the, um, the flow have been turned off now because we have the extra grow beds online we can accommodate that. This water here is not aerated for the goldfish with any stones. The water's coming through from the grow bed will be provide enough aeration for these six fish and the fire tail gudgeons that you won't be able to see in there little small fellas but anyway that pump over there feeds up through that black line on the ground there into the fish tank over the back comes into the fish tank over there and then exits through that pipe over there so that's the one that Maya showed you before while I was here. Um, that then goes, travels down through that white pipe there to the tap over in the back corner, to those two taps, through the siphons, and then back down through the system. Now, for those who don't already know, what happens is the fish in both tanks, there's 30 um, jade perch in here, Baku grunters, very healthy fish, one of the highest, if not the highest, in omega-3 for freshwater fish. They're in there excreting ammonia and other wastes. Those wastes get taken through those outlet pipes down and into the grow beds. In the grow beds, bacteria that occur in nature have uh, pretty much all colonised. They turn the ammonia into nitrites and then a separate sort of bacteria turn the nitrites into nitrates. Nitrates are taken up by the fish. Uh, fish, they're not fish, plants. Um, there's also other nutrients in there as well, it's not just nitrate. Um, with the other waste, the solid waste. So what we've got in here is pretty much all plants living off of the waste from fish after two sets of bacteria have changed it into something that they can handle. 
So we get the fresh veggies, which will be going in here as well tomorrow. And we also get some jade perch. So I don't know if they're going to come out and say good day. Oh, there's a couple down in there. So those guys, they're only babies at the moment. They're only about um, 150 mil or um, 15 centimeters long, half a foot at the most. At the most. The biggest would be that big. Uh, the rest would be a lot smaller than that. Um, hopefully by about January, February, they'll be plate size, probably 20 centimeters to 30 centimeters. I'll just show you how we plant out in the grow bed. I'll put a couple of kohlrabi and a um, rainbow chard in. So what we do is we get a bucket of water, um, the little eggshells in this case, um, normally little planter pots or whatever. And what you're trying to do is getting as much dirt as you can off of the little roots of the, from around the roots of the plants. So unfortunately this one's just had some breakthrough into the bottom hole there. So all we do is we pop them into a bucket of water and give them a bit of a massage around to try and get as much dirt out as we can. Tell you what, sounds of those siphons in the background and music to my ears. So anyway, that's what you end up with. You end up with um, just a little root mass like that. And from there, we just plant it straight into the bed. So just have to bear with me as I rearrange the camera. So this one here is just going to go in the middle section here. It's as easy as popping him in and putting the balls around him. And there you go. So he'll grow up there nice and happily. So I'll do another kohlrabi and we'll plant him pretty much well next to this guy. The beauty of aquaponics is you can actually cram a lot more in um, for the area than you normally can. Um, same as hydroponics. Yeah, but things can fit in a lot more compacted area, so... So this one here will just be going in here. As easy as that. Well, that's pretty much all it. I hope I've answered any questions you have. If not, put them in the comments section below. Um, yeah, it's it's been 12 months <laughs> since we started, and I'm very happy that we finally got as far as we have. So we'll be putting some other plants in the other bed tomorrow, maybe the uh, week after. I don't want to rush it and overplant the whole system because we've, our fish are only young at the moment. They're not producing a lot of waste. So we'll just see how that goes. And I will be thinning out the um, original bed and um, transplanting some of the spring onions into these two. But that's pretty much all it. Any questions, comment section below. I'll try and answer them. Um, I know I haven't been particularly thorough and people who have been doing aquaponics for a while will know all this stuff already so have a good one and take it easy catch ya